But gather yourself on your mat. Take off your sweatshirt if you're wearing one. You can keep it on if you want. All right, we're gonna go into sun salutes and let me tell you, I'm coming back from a shoulder injury and that's why my sun salutes are a little weird looking, I apologize. Yours are pretty, mine are weird looking. Come to the front of your mat, inhale your arms over your head, exhale, swan dive forward bend, inhale, flat back, exhale, I'm stepping back to my plank pose, lowering down using my arm muscles to Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, come over your toes. Exhale, come back. Chaturanga Dandasana, Downward Dog. So that, that was an extra push-up. Bottom of your exhale, step to the front of the mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, arms over your head. Exhale, hands to your heart. Let's do it again. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, swan dive, forward bend. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, plank, lowering down, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, over your toes. Exhale, come back to Chaturanga Dandasana, downward dog. Bottom of your exhale, step to the front of the mat or jump. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands to your heart. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, swan dive, forward bend. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, plank. Lowering down, inhale, over our, your toes, and wiggling a little bit. Exhale, come back to that push-up, and then the downward dog. That extra push-up is like, for me, that's so hard. Bottom of your exhale, step to the front of the mat. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands to your heart. Gonna slow things down after that. Coming into some holds. We're gonna do some long holds, starting with chair. Who doesn't love chair pose? So you're only seeing me from the front here, but you know what chair looks like, right? You're like pretending that you're sitting in a chair. Some people's chairs are higher. Mine's kind of high. Some people would like a really low chair. Wherever you go, find a place where you're not getting too much knee action. You know what I mean? You want to find it in your legs and mostly in your feet, a little bit in your hips, not so much in your knees. What you're doing is you're making this sculpture of your bones, balancing your weight over this sculpture of your bones so that there isn't one part of you that's feeling it too much. That's our great challenge when we do yoga with long holds like this. Okay, now I'm taking my right, that's my, I'm gonna say it's my left even though that's my right. Okay, left leg forward. This is Utita Hasta Parangastasana. It is, it's kind of like pyramid pose, only you've got your leg in the air. So, it's also a really intense hamstring stretch. As you see, I can't quite get there. Like, my leg is a little bit bent. I'm gonna call that okay. If you don't feel like you can grab your toe yet, you could grab your calf or the back of your thigh. Or you could just hold your leg out straight with the strength of your core, that's pretty hard to do. Or you could hold your leg out bent. It's all versions of the same pose. Yeah, do the other leg. That would be your right, I guess. Yes. Hmm. And so, I'm going to pose this a little bit out of range, such as this. As you can see, this is a little bit out of range for me. The challenge is not only for me to get into that hamstring, it's also for me to not mess with my own shoulders, you know? Because it's really tempting to take that shoulder forward with the leg and get in a little bit deeper. I kind of am doing that a little bit. But what I'm really hoping that I will do is bring that shoulder back a little bit and try and get a shoulder alignment at the same time as I'm stretching my leg. Yoga is such a challenge, man. The challenge goes on and on. Okay, coming down from that, what are we going to do? Oh, I love this thing. You're taking your left foot and wrapping it around your right, and then you're taking your left arm, putting it under your right, and we're sitting down in our eagle pose. So at some point, you might feel like you're doing kind of a lot of leg work. And that's because this is a lot of legwork. This sequence has a lot of legwork. We're getting into the first chakra and just kind of like, I mean, I hesitate to use the word juicing. We're not, you know, we're like, you know, getting some stuff going, first chakra-wise. These are crazy times and crazy times. Call for some first chakra yoga. Here we are. You know what the first chakra is, right? It's about your, uh, 
Okay, never mind. I'm going to tell you in a second. So you're going to take that left leg behind you. I'm grabbing the inside of the foot and kicking back. Um, you, I'm going to say some stuff about that. All right, so first of all, keep your hips square. You're balancing over that standing leg. This is a tough, tough pose. It's not our jasana, Lord of the Dance. I'm grabbing the inside of my foot. Sometimes I grab the outside of the foot. I'm the only yoga teacher I know who switches. Usually there is a very hard party, party line about one or the other. In Bikram, they tell you to grab the inside. In Black Mountain Yoga, where I teach, they're all about the outside. I'm going to say, you, you, you decide. I switch. I like them both. Anyway, here we are. And you're like, is it ever going to end? And it will. Okay. Good. What am I doing? I don't know. Oh, yeah. So I was going into Warrior Three, and I just turned my body because I was I accidentally kicking the bass drum there. You don't have to turn your body. Same leg is going back in Warrior Three as was up in Natarajasana. I really like a warrior three after the dancer pose because it is like glutes and then glutes, but in a different way. It's like glutes and hips and then glutes and hips, but in a different way. And you're breathing here. And at this point, I am almost positive that you're feeling like you're doing some leg work because I sure was. And you're breathing. And you're like, does she actually play that drum kit? And I'm like, yep. I sure do. Kinda. In my own way. Take your legs apart and come down. Prasarita Padatanasana straddle forward fold. Alright. This is gonna feel good. Earn this. This is, I love this pose. You can do this however you want. Your legs can be closer together. They can be further apart. You can have your arms in front of you or behind you. You can have your head on the ground. Whatever is feeling good. It's really not about what it looks like. It's about what it feels like. So find a good spot. And breathe. Yeah. Oh, were you hoping we would do goddess? Because here it is. Goddess is a deep squat. I like to take my elbows together and then open them apart like that, like you're in the gym. And I like to feel like the top half of my body and the bottom half of my body are a mirror of each other. This is a hard pose. Especially if you're hanging out here for a while. You notice that we're doing some long holds, right? Yep. First chakra. So that's your tailbone. The first chakra is your, your tailbone and your perineum area. And I like to think that in a pose like this, you can feel energy coming up from one foot across your perineum down the other leg to the other foot and vice versa. Like you're creating this arc of energy. That's standing poses. All right, let's feel it here. Now we've got the other leg. I guess that's your right leg over your left. Make sure you're doing the other way than before. Right arm goes under the left and we're sitting down in our eagle. Breathe in. Yeah, first chakra. This one's got some second too. And it's, um, it is the home home chakra. It's your root chakra. In yoga, we say that it's about, you know, knowing where you live and where you belong and that your basic necessities are being taken care of. Yes, that's a good time for the first chakra. Take that leg behind you and come into your dancer thing. I practice this one kind of a lot. I'm, I'm not bad at this. If you're, if you're having more trouble with it, don't worry about it. It's one of those ones that takes a while. It's an intense balance and it's also a, it requires a lot of strength in the leg and in the back. Makes you kind of admire dancers a lot. Or figure skaters. One thing I love about this pose and about Warrior 3 is that if you get your balance right, you can really find an interesting stretch in the standing leg. Look, look around for that and feel that. Yeah. Good. And then we're coming into Warrior 3 on this side, and I am turning, but you don't have to turn. Fell down a little bit, picking myself back up, Warrior 3. Ideally, that back leg would be straight. I think mine is bent because I have tight hamstrings. Breathe in. It's 
kind of a weird shot. Can't really tell where my pants end and the drum kit begins. Luckily you know how to do Warrior 3. Okay. Take your legs apart. Oh yeah. Coming back to Prasarita Padatanasana. Straddle forward fold. Breathing here and taking your toes a little pigeon toed inward. But much more importantly than that, you're finding the exact right spot for this stretch. And being with it. Oh. I um, play the drums in two bands, not very well, but that's what I have them for. Okay, now we're gonna, what are we doing? Oh, side plank, yeah. Come on to one hand in your side plank. Let's see what hand that is. It was, that was my right hand. Uh, side plank is one of my favorite poses. I actually really genuinely like this pose. It's so muscly. It's a very muscly pose. But I feel like it's also a really good reset for the shoulders. If you get your hand positioned correctly, then your shoulders are going to be like, thank you, I want it to wiggle into that thing. And if that's not what you're feeling, it might mean that that hand is in the wrong place. I need to adjust. Figure out a different balance. All right. And so then I'm taking the opposite leg. I guess that's the left leg. Forward. Coming down into a lizard. Do you see how both of my hands are on the inside of that left foot? And then I've got some space uh, crosswise on the mat here between my legs. Coming down to lizard. Lizard is kind of like low lunge, except that we spread it out in two directions. We made it longer and we also made it wider. And what you're doing is you are trying to get into your hip. And um, you can be down on your forearms or up on your hands. You can have that knee on the ground or have the knee up. However you want to express this pose is good. There's a million different ways to do it. All right, and then coming into half Hanumanasana, leaning down over the front leg, there's your hamstring, yeah. Yeah. The next couple of poses we're doing are all about hamstrings, so just be with that. If you're extremely flexible, of course, you can take that back leg back and be in the full Hanumanasana. Um, that would be a you thing. Either way, you're staying with your breath. Good. and then we're going to straighten the back leg, squaring the hips to the front of the mat, coming into a pyramid. So, I hope you're as interested in that transition as I am. Super interesting. The, when we were in half Hanumanasana, we were doing this exact same pose, but with one knee on the ground. They're closely related poses. Both have kind of the same objective as that hamstring. I'm doing this shoulder thing. I've got my arms up over my head, stretching my shoulders. You don't have to do that. That's only if you're like not so distracted by your hamstring that you want to add something else in, you know what I mean? The hamstring is the main thing. Add the shoulders if you like it. Good. And then, oh, what is this? Well, it's a forward bend, Uttanasana. At this point in our practice, we've done enough leg stuff that you're like, yeah forward bend. Be with it and find those feet on the ground. The bones of your feet are your anchor and your balance. They're the placement of the bones of your feet are what makes the difference between a good pose and a great pose. All you advanced yogis, I have a couple of advanced yogis who watch my stuff I think, um, you can make your pose even better. Even though it's already so great and you're like, how can I get better? You can get better. L look at those feet and find a way. All right, well, not right now though, because now we're going into side plank. On the other side, as Martia would say, you're going to rainbow your hips up. Rainbow your hips up. And what that does is it engages the muscles in the core and the hips and takes the weight much more lightly on the wrist. 
activating the whole body, lifting through the core. I fell over a little bit, I picked myself up. Side plank. Muscly pose. Good. And then bring that, uh, where I put that, your yeah, right foot, I guess, forward. Finding your lizard, such an interesting pose. It's wide and it's wide and it's different. And, and when I teach this in a class, I love to teach it in a class because there's always a room full of people doing it 100% differently from each other. Everybody's interpretation of lizard is different because everybody does different stuff with their body outside of their yoga practice. And so some people like to go down really low or some people like to keep it high. You just have to find your balance in the place where the pose is giving you what you need. Yeah, good. And then straighten your front leg. Square your hips and lean down over it. This is a big hamstring stretch. Half Hanumanasana. And what we're trying to do in all of our forward bends is find a little bit of a back bend even as we come forward. I would say I'm not doing the most terrific job ever at that, but... That is our goal. Releasing the hamstring and seeing if you can also release the lumbar spine a little bit. Yeah. Good. And then straighten that back leg. And here we are in pyramid. A close relative, as I said, of Hapan Manasana getting into the hamstring a little bit more. I didn't always have a drum kit in my bedroom, but recently a whole bunch of kids have come back from college and we've had to kind of shuffle things around to make more space. Coming into forward bend, yes. I was digging this at the time. I am digging this now. Forward bend. Nothing like some leg work that includes some leg stretching, right? I'm bringing that shoulder thing in. Increasingly, I'm more and more into that shoulder thing. And, and the reason why I do it is because there are moments when I just feel my shoulders not being right. And that's when I try to remind myself that way. I'm going to say it's never necessary, but it's often nice. All right, step back. What are we doing now? Well, making up my mind. Oh, looks like a plank. Doing plank. Kind of a funny looking plank. Plank is a muscly pose. In, ah oh yes, I kind of corrected myself there. If you feel like your butt is in the air, like mine was a second ago, um, bring it down a little bit, you know? As we get more advanced, we're trying to make our planks plankier. More plank-like. Good, and then, oh, wouldn't it be great to do a downward dog? You know it would. Here it is. Downward dog. Walk in it. Oh, yes. And look, what I, I like to take my hips from side to side and just crack my back. That feels really good. I only do it if it feels good. Downward dog gives you rare access into parts of your body that you can't really get to any other way. So anytime you get to a downward dog, really dig in there. That's what I like to do. your reward for all that leg work and leg stretching some downward dog. Okay, now the right leg is up. What am I doing? Oh, I know what I'm doing. I'm stacking my hips 
and uh, <laughs> I'm stacking my hips and kind of waving my foot in the air. This is a hip relief. This is a totally vulgar shot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one like a down dog with this hip release. You see what I'm doing, right? I'm stacking my hips and I'm doing that downward dog, what, what do we call that thing, like twist thing? It would roll over into a wild thing, except I don't have room because of the drum kit, so I'm just leaving it like that. And then I'm coming forward. Oh, guess what? Pigeon pose. We're going to be here for a long time. This is our yin of the day, pigeon. And get ready for me to talk a lot about pigeon. If you don't feel like me talking a lot about pigeon, just tune this out, okay? I have a lot to say. So, pigeon pose is when we stack our body weight on top of our hip. Like you make a sculpture with your bones that will allow you to put your body weight on your hip. In this case, that's my right hip. And there are many things that can go wrong with this because your body weight is whatever it is, right? And you've got your leg bent underneath you. And so, yeah, you're putting your weight in your hip, but it would also be easy to put your body weight into the joint of the knee, which is what we don't want to do. So, there's a couple of things that you can do to protect your knee. And one is to flex your foot underneath your body and um, that engages the muscles around the knee and makes the pose just come into the hip and not the knee. That's, that's a good way to do it. Um, if Big Cass I Hanger was here, he would tell you to make that leg that's underneath you into a right angle. Like you've got to have your foot and your knee parallel to each other and then come down. Like that's the safest in his opinion and many other people's opinion. And although I agree with them, I just, I can't do that, and I don't know too many people who can. That's a humongous stretch. That's a huge ask. So, that is where we're going. When we get really good at this pose, we're going to make a right angle with that front leg. But, um, for us real people, that's maybe not today. That said, you have to be safe, okay? If you feel anything coming into your knee, you've got to rearrange your pose because you seriously can hurt your knee doing pigeon. I have hurt my knee doing pigeon. Don't. Just have it be about the hip. And now I'm done talking, so you just breathe. and pick up that same leg that's underneath you and put it forward, squaring your hips. We're going to fix up that long pigeon by doing a longish, not as long, but longish high lunge. Basically taking the muscles that we just wrung out and putting some fiber back in, you know, um, feeling them get strong and that is the final part of the cleanse. Yin yoga goes very well with yang yoga, as you might imagine. We stretched and now we're building. Yeah, put your hands on the ground. Step back, downward dog, pick up your other leg. That's your left one. Uh, I think it's your left. And hit the toms with your foot if you can. We're getting ready for that long pigeon. Right now we're just prepping up. a pre-stretch. Yeah. Okay. 
lay it down underneath you. There's your pigeon pose. Um, and on this side, I remembered about high pigeon. Sorry, I forgot on the other side. Anytime you want, when you know you're going into a long pigeon, you can come up and kind of fix your bows, arrange them a little bit in a high pigeon like that, and then lay down into the long pigeon. That is what I like to do next time. I will walk you through that, I promise. Anyway, here we are in low pigeon. I'm going to stop talking and let you just breathe. All right, so put some weight in your hands and take that leg that's underneath you all the way back up and find that twisty thing for a second. And then come back to a high lunge, taking that same leg forward, but in a totally different way. We took it forward and then relaxed our whole body weight into that hip muscle. And now we're taking it forward and engaging that whole hip muscle like um, in opposition to gravity. Your legs are working in high lunge. They are building this thing, this structure. And because of the structure, you can find a back bend. It is a back bend. Now, the first million times you, you do high lunge, you might not find a back bend, and that's totally good. But eventually it turns into one. All right, step back to plank pose. Lower down, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, open your heart. Exhale, back to Chaturanga Dandasana. Lifting to your downward dog. Bottom of your exhale, step or jump. And here we are, coming onto your butt. Oh, it's time for boat pose. Roll your heart open to the extent that you are able while holding your body weight with your core. You can straighten your legs if you like it extra tough. Clearly today I don't like it extra tough. I'm hanging out and I'm breathing. Good. And then come down on your back and put your right foot on your left knee and thread your hands through for figure four. Here's what we're... I'm just, just I'm checking that though. Don't worry about me. Figure four. Figure four is pigeon, but in a different relation to gravity, you know. It's on your back. And so you got more leverage into that now, you don't have more leverage into the hip, but you have more control over how much weight you want to use. Uh, when you're in pigeon, it's just kind of an all or nothing kind of thing. And here, in figure four, you can change your angle if and when you ever want to. Okay, and then keep that shape in your legs, but put your left foot on the ground, pick up your hips, one-legged bridge, and then turn that whole shape until your right foot is standing, your right knee points towards the ceiling. We're doing a long ribbony twist, ribbony twist across your second and third chakras, your digestive system. You can take your top knee and pull it down if you want to, or you can keep it up. My preference is to keep it up. It's just, all it's going to do is change the angle of the twist. 
and you're finding the angle that is speaking to your body specifically to your digestive system Good, and then come up. Oh, it's time for more boat. Yeah, I did this on purpose. I really did. Because you can do this twisty thing if you like it. Or just regular boat. I like some core work before a twist and in between a twist. I really do. It makes the twist so much better. You're generating tons of heat in the middle body. And then we're going to twist it. It's so great. Actually, we're going to hold it and then we're twisting. Right now we are generating. Feel it generating, it's really happening. It's for real. Good, okay, come down on your back and come into figure four on the opposite side. I think you've got your left foot on your right knee, threading your hands through. So we generated all that heat. Boat, 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 boat. And now we're holding it in your middle body. Mm, that's really good. And then put your right leg on the ground, pick up your hips just briefly in a one-legged branch. And then put your hips on the ground, keep that shape in your legs and let the whole shape go to your right until your left foot is standing and your left knee points towards the ceiling. We're just finding that twist in the other direction. In this time of chaos, there's so much tension in the body. I'm speaking of individual bodies and also our collective body. As yogis, there really is something that we can do about that. We can um, do yoga. All right, come into a bridge pose. Back of your head on the ground, shoulders on the ground. What I'm doing here is a couple of, for lack of a better word, they are pelvic thrusts. Kind of like doing cat cows only from my back. I like to just kind of reorganize my spine after a twist. And then here we are in bridge. And I'm gonna move it into a wheel. You don't have to, you can stay in bridge. I like, um, I like wheel pose. If you feel like doing a giant back bend, come to wheel. If you feel like doing a more moderate back bend, stay in bridge. And then come down, hug your knees into your body, rock side to side. And then lay your body down, guess what? Oh, time for Shavasana, I'm gonna stop talking again. Shavasana. Help, hey, I'm back. Just wanted to say, really do the Shavasana, okay? I know you're at home and nobody's watching you, but like, do it anyway, do the Shavasana. I will tell you when to come up.
Okay, roll your fingers and toes and wrists and ankles. Stretch your arms away from your legs. Bend your knees and roll to your right side. And feel your heart beating. So good. And come on up to seated. Take your hands to your forehead and breathe into your sinuses, honoring every cell in your body. Take your hands to your heart, breathe into your lungs. I dedicate my practice to you, and I'm genuinely grateful that you're practicing during this crazy, crazy time. Namaste.